So what do we got here? All right, this is Robot here, ScooterWest.com, Vespa Motorsport. Um, I'm pretty conservative when it comes to old Vespas. Uh, my favorite Vespa is right here, the Rally 200. Uh, I've had a lot of different Vespas over the years, tons of the modern ones, a lot of different vintage ones over the years. Uh, far and above all the Vespas, this is my favorite Vespa. Yeah. It's cool to have the older ones. There's other rare ones like the SS90 or Super Sport or the GS150, GS160. I have a GL150, it's kind of trimmed out cool, but it's like a slow poke. Cool thing about this bike is it was super reliable and it was the large displacement, you know, the largest displacement they made yet. Um, this model right here was built in 1974, came out somewhere in 72, 73. It's a full American market. It's got the ugly, ugly bug eye turn signals. It's got the funky tail light, the funky handlebars on it. I don't really care. Just leave it the way it is. <laughs> um, if anybody's uh, listening to my other videos, I've had a Rally 200 for quite a long time. My previous Rally 200 that was all original, very much like this one, never restored, was a 1976. Uh, through the years that they made the Rally 200, they made little subtle changes, and I'll point out some of those changes they made, you know, specific to the American one. Um, I like the looks of the European one better, but whatever. It's kind of funky American 70s at its best right here, so I'll leave it the way it is. Um, my 76, I pretty much, if anybody knew Wade Parker, there's a, a memorial service for him. He's an old scooter dude that's been in San Diego as long as I've been into, or much longer than I've been into scooters, but when I was out of high school, I knew who he was, his you know, scooter daddy. Well, he passed away um, like nine months ago, you know, whatever, it's 2017, it was like mid-2016. Um, I let a friend borrow my 200, my Rally 200 I've had for years and years and years, the Rally 200 that I've ridden all the way to Cabo, the Rally 200 that I've ridden in the dunes, I've ridden on the beach, I've ridden to San Francisco, I've ridden everywhere with it. I've done like crazy trips. I had you know, the intent of doing even crazier trips with it someday. But unfortunately, I don't know what happened, but I wasn't around. Never let anybody borrow my bikes usually, or my vintage bikes. I let people borrow my new ones because I know they're replaceable, but um, ran it into a car. Uh, completely mangled the front of it. Not even worth thinking about it, whatever. A uh, good friend in Oceanside, California. He's really into rallies. His name is Malcolm. He's got like four rallies. And he found this rally up in Fresno, California. Nice, dry, arid part of uh, California. You know, just an all original rally. He kind of got it going. Uh, shortly after I, uh, my original rally was wrecked, um, I don't know. He just said, oh, I'll sell you one of my rallies, kind of the original one. And I know he put a little bit of time into it. Uh, went through the carburetor, got some, you know, got some stuff running. Um, let me ride it. And I said, oh, let's, let's go on a ride. So he's like, oh, we're going to go up Palomar Mountain. I'm like, that's cool. That's like a real windy road that all the sport bike guys go up to. I mean, I like doing on everything. Uh, let's not just go up Palomar Mountain, like via the regular, uh, North Face Road, or there's the uh, East Grade. They're both real windy roads, if anybody knows San Diego, uh, East County San Diego motorcycle roads. But they're real fun roads. I've intimidated motorcyclists, like guys on sport bikes with old scooters. My GL, one time I was on some, some guy's tail, and I just got sick of him and eventually passed him. And I, I swear I thought he was gonna fall off his bike when he saw an old Vespa passing him. But I don't know, I know my scooters pretty well. I know how to hang my, my feet out and just like pushing the limits. Well, Malcolm's like, he knows I'm like into off-roading and dirt bikes and all that garbage, whatever. It's not really scooters. But we're gonna go up Nate Harrison grade. If you ever look up the um, Palmer Mountain, 
it's like a classic old switchback dirt road that goes all the way up Power Mountain, you know, pretty much from, I don't know, 1,500 feet to 7,000 feet. Um, I say, oh, let's just ride the rallies up there. He was riding a rally. I had, there was another buddy that was riding a P200. It was after some of the rains and there's snowfall up there on the side of the road. Rode this up there. Best part of it is on the front, the front tire, it had the original Chiat tire from the 70s, like an old block tread tire that was on it. So I went up this dirt road on this crusty old tire that was still in pretty good shape. And it was pretty fun going up the uh, dirt road, sliding around a little bit. Bike wasn't mine, I said, oh yeah, this thing runs great. Just needs a little bit more TLC, a couple things I want to do to it. Yeah, definitely, I want to buy it off you. Um, Went back down uh, the mountain road on that crusty tire. I was a little scared going down. I was like, oh boy, I don't need a tire to let go on me. But made it back, and now I have it. I put a little bit of love into it. Uh, replaced the oil sight glass. As you can see, the floorboard's got some oil in it. The plastic oil sight glass that threads into the metal oil tank that's on these scooters, that's for the oil injection system, which feeds, if you're not familiar with two strokes, it feeds uh, meters uh, the two-stroke oil into the um, carburetor, you know, so you don't have to add the oil to the, um, the gasoline. But you can see it's like weeping through the edges. I went in there, pulled the tank. I think I replaced the fuel line, replaced the um, fuel tap was already replaced, and replaced this little sight glass on here. You see the 73, what's unique about it is it's still got the old-style metal um, fuel tap on it. When you see C exposed, that's Close is off, that's run, and there's reserve. So it gives you the last um, two liters or half gallon of gas you know, in the tank. Um, a couple other unique things about this bike. It's got like, I don't know, the most troublesome electrical system they ever had for all the 70s era Vespas. But I like that. I'm gonna actually leave it all alone. I'm just gonna fix a couple things. I kinda like the funky electrical system on this thing. Um, first of all, it's got the key down here. So there it's on, the key doesn't come out. And it comes out when it's not in run. Uh, later rallies had a key up on the um, handlebars. European rallies mostly didn't have a battery, they just ran off the Magneto. A nice simple setup that, that's not prone to having too many problems like these pesky American ones. You got this funky uh, turn signal switch. And I don't even think there's enough voltage. Oh, there they are. This is the way those turn signals flash. And that's actually pretty good. They're just like weird. They look like woo, woo, kind of like a 70s, um, I don't know, sci-fi movie or something. Um, that's turn signal. Horn doesn't work. I probably got to take it all apart. Can't really get that funky big horn that they used. Um, it's got like a high beam, low beam switch here. 75, 76 went to uh, a better setup for the switches instead of these funky ones. I mean, they're still funky, but not as funky. <laughs> um, still have the pod turn signals. Uh, another thing that's pretty unique about the Rally 200, pretty much everything from 73 all the way up to 76, is it had a very unique ignition system, unlike any other Vespa. They had a company in, in Spain uh, called Femzatronic. They made the ignition systems for um, Boltacos, uh, uh, Husqvarna's, a lot of the uh, early two-stroke dirt bikes, they were making ignition systems. Um, and they made uh, the first electronic ignition system for the Vespa. And as what electronic ignition is, is you don't have a mechanical points. It's all electronic and solid state. There's like a, um, a magnetic pickup. It's too bad the other day I just rebuilt somebody's uh, stator plate that was a Rally 200. I could have showed you the very unique stator plate that they have. But I'll show you some of the parts. This has got all original stuff, minus the wiring, and it's missing two parts that kind of drive me nuts that I'm gonna um, eventually address. Or actually three little parts, I can tell you what those are. So this is the Femzatronic ignition system. It's this funky, like orange, kind of translucent coil. Um, and it's a very unique system. The flywheel's different for the Rally 200. Internally, the motor's very, very close to the, the P200E and the PX, you know, PX200 all the way up to, you know, a couple of years ago. This is kind of the uh, 
the first use of the 200 architecture for the Vespas. A um, couple things missing here is like normally you'd have there's a little plastic thing that holds those three terminals and there's a rubber boot. Unfortunately, those are uh, lost or rotted away. It had some other Mickey Mouse wiring that somebody hacked in. Um, there's normally a little clip here that holds the wiring. Uh, the wiring was put in new tubing. There's a nice generous loop that kind of um, allows for the suspension movement since the coil is fixed to the body, which is quite unique for the Vespa rallies. Uh, 7374 had this funky turn signal connection there. Later down the road, they, they came up with a new, new design for uh, making the electrical connection, which was used on the P200Es, the PXs, Stellas, LMLs, everything therefore on. But first two years, they used this funky electrical connection. Um, you know, but the most unique thing is electronic ignition. And that electronic ignition, a lot of people are like, oh man, the Femzotronic, that's not reliable, I want to rip it out, all that stuff. As long as you get all the wiring good, my other rally, I've ridden all over the place. I've, I've ridden a scooter underwater. I mean, this, this should be sealed up, but, <laughs> and it holds up just fine. The spark is indeed stronger than the, um, the Ducati ignition found on all the later Vespas. It's a stronger spark, works really good. There's an aftermarket replacement box that's, that's available for these. Um, I'm not much of like a parts hoarder or anything. I'm like kind of a neat freak and don't like having stuff around or hanging on to things. It's, there's a couple, I don't know, prized possessions like this, I guess. But I do have a little mini hoard of those Femzotronic uh, ignition boxes, including one that's never been installed. And I have a used one. So if this one goes out, I'm gonna put that used one on there. They're not really available, really difficult to find. They go for a lot of money on eBay for the original electronic ignitions on these. You can see some of the other funkiness. They got reflectors on the front. Um, I already put, I put, um, Mich uh, not Michelin City Grips, Zippy one tires on it. Just, I don't know. To me, it's the same tires I've been running for the last 20 years. <laughs> Whatever, they've been, uh, been around for a long time, but they work good, they're good all around tire. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty much unmolested. Yeah, still has got like, you see a little bit of the chalkiness to the paint, a little bit of this small amount of rust. Someday I'm gonna just gonna um, compound the whole entire thing, give it a super good detail and call it a day. I have a whole set of turn sails. Maybe I'll put those on as well. Dress it up just a little bit. And that's as far as I'm gonna take the scooter. Uh, other things, somebody's replaced the seat. It's not the original seat cover on it, but whatever. It's very close to Strap's original. Kind of got that bluish color to it. Um, there's one thing I am going to work on today, and I'll show you a problem with this 73 and 74 electrical systems. And most of the problems are on this side. There's a, uh, the original Chiat front tire, or tire that was on the front. This is the tire I was riding on not too long. It holds air just fine. I'm not sure. I can't believe I trusted that thing. <laughs> but there's a little problem with these fuse holders. You can see all these like terminals are a little bit melted. And I put some heat shrink over all these. The turn signals were working because I had part of them hooked up, but these fuse holders, they get so hot that they just melt the fuses out of them. And this morning I was like trying to troubleshoot on my commute here into the shop, but that one fuse just melted right out. And you can see this one's kind of not holding up too well. And I tried to bend them. You know what? That's cool. It's got that original fuse holder, but you know what? I can't live with that. So you see that connection is just completely melted. And I, I swear every single one has been like that. Uh, another thing I did is, I don't know, unfortunately most of the aftermarket um, batteries that are available for these aren't the greatest quality anymore. These are two six volt um, uh, SLA, sealed lead acid batteries. You know, it's like a gel electrolyte, so there's no spillage or you know, anything that leaks out of them. And I, I tied two, two six volt batteries in parallel. I put this battery tender style lead and I just carefully spliced it into the original wiring because I don't really want to mess with the original wiring as bad as it might be, whatever. I'm going to leave it alone. So, but it's what I do need to do for sure is replace this stupid fuse holder or do something about it. And I'll show you how I'm going to take care of that. You see the same thing for the turn signals. There's the funky little flasher. It's still all intact and it works fine. We'll leave it alone. 
All right, so I'm just gonna leave the little, uh, the original time capsule uh, fuse holder alone. Hasta luego, sorry. No more uh, fuse holder that's original anymore. Uh, I, I put this together. These are much more modern fuses. This is like the modern micro fuses that are used on pretty much like you know, most modern cars, all that stuff. Real easily, you know, you can get them real easy. It doesn't take much space. Those are two like kind of high quality fuse holders. The terminals are real tight so the fuse holder, fuses won't pop out. Um, but it's just gonna emulate pretty much what that original uh, European style fuse holder that never tends to survive on any of these era scooters, whether it's a Rally, a Super, or, um, Primavera, Sprint, any of those from 73, 74. Uh, I don't want to convert to AC. I like all the lights the way they work. And as long as everything else is good, they, they tend to be pretty reliable other than this stupid fuse holder. The regulator is working perfect. The output's good. It's keeping the batteries charged, not overcharging them. But I made up this little fuse, fuse holder right here. Um, you see there's two circuits on this. This is coming from the battery. So I'm going to just go ahead and connect. And see how loose those are? I'm gonna go in there and crimp those a little tighter because I don't want them, the, I want, you know, when I have a nice positive connection. So, you know, that's, that's why these things end up melting is a lot of times they, they're just, the connections are loose or they're a little bit corroded. You have a bike like this, you wanna go through all the electrical connections. You know, and the wiring on the stator is usually all rotted. That was all taken care of. On here, I have a 10 amp fuse and a seven and a half amp fuse. There's two wires. You can see this one that's, uh, I think it's like a, a green wire. That's the one that powers your headlight. And we'll connect that to the seven and a half amp fuse. And the other one down here that's all melted, gotta make sure it's, it's pretty tight. I think it's a red wire. And that's your charging. And I think the turn signal is a horn, the brake light all the other good stuff. And we'll go ahead and put that one on there. And you know what I'll do? I'll probably put a little bit of heat shrink over that connection just to keep it from uh, shorting. You know, it's kind of a common problem. So with these stupid fuse holders melting all the stuff, and this bike is really low miles. I think it only has like 7,000 miles on it and all this stuff's already messed up. So I'm sure it was a big problem when these bikes were new, but I'm pretty much, I'm gonna pop that on there. Nice, the tire, you know, with any of these connections, if you have nice tight electrical connections, yeah, that's where you're not gonna have issues. There it is, so it's in there. Since there's a little bit of electrical exposed, that's heat shrink, you know, if anybody's ever used that, it's quite nice stuff for you can see the other one, I already put some heat shrink just on the terminal. So 10 amp fuse for the, the main circuit and then for the headlight, it's, um, it's gonna be the, um, the uh, whatever you call it, the uh, seven and a half amp. And it should be just fine. And wedge it in there. There's a spare fuse I put on there. So that's all I've done that's kind of funky and not original. But whatever, I wanna use this thing as my rider. So, you know, it's more important that things work. Yeah, everything's good. I'll check it out, make sure nothing's, nothing's uh, shorter. So let's see if it all works. So you got it on, on, tail light works, headlights working, high beam. It's too bad the horn doesn't work, but I'll get to that sometime. Yeah, the turn signals that work, you know, a lot of times you want to have the scooter started and they'll work. Yeah, right now I don't have a load of the, the rear one, so it's kind of flashing really fast. But it looks like everything works. Pop the cow back on. That's all I'm doing to this bike for now. And I'm going to ride it home tonight. Okay, I'm still recording. You got the little funky connection that's found on the 7374 rallies. Anytime you take the cows off on these things, you want to make sure the turn cells still work. Yeah, you know, they're pretty finicky, you know, to keep 
keep operational. It's working, barely. <laughs> but there you go. There's my new to me 74 Rally 200. All original, stainless steel trim's all perfect on it. Ulma trim that was came on them from the factory. I couldn't ask for more. I could have a, if I could have a restored bike or this, I'd take this. Just my style. Just needs a little bit more cleaning and I'm done with it. And hope to do some crazy uh, adventure rides, some long distance stuff. I was on the freeway for a second this morning with this bike. I was doing an honest 70 miles an hour down the highway. You wouldn't imagine that something from the 70s that's a Vespa on 10 inch wheels would do it, but it does. All right, see all you guys later. Hope you like uh, one of my bikes in my collection. I'll show you more of them as time allows. And hopefully I'll get back on to my orange sprint, but the new sprint that is. Yeah.